little going out to the restaurant or something just this mm. and then hanging out as friends and chit chat and all that and then but back here I think sometimes you will get then home you you need to actually gather some money to actually go out mm -hmm. but here money is available so outing was not a problem but sometimes I think we are all careful when it comes to having a garden nobody wants to get too close before they they say mm. so sometimes <laughs> everybody is just so careful you know careful and, just clean it like you understand what I mean. I mean ah, come here. <laughs> ah. So I think Indians accept people's religion as they are. But the only thing they do not accept is for you to try to introduce their religion, your religion to them, mm. especially Christianity or Islamic to Hindu or something. So I respect that I stay in my lane, they also stay in their lane. Mm. And that is it. We are all cool. Yeah, okay. So, oh. personally, for me, if I should advise someone coming to India, I would say that India is a very big country, and there are so many schools in India, a lot. And the more the quantity, you should know that the more the the residuals yeah. and yeah. so you have to be really careful in choosing your school. Yeah. That is the most important thing because you'll be shocked. The India we hear that education is good, it, it doesn't mean share food a lot. Oh my god! Every time you have an Indian oh friend, they will invite you for dinner, they will invite you for lunch, they something. Always, they are always nice with their food. They mm. never say no, don't eat with us. Mm. Or they always want to share. Ah. That's something beautiful about Indians. They love each other. Back so at it, home, when you have food, you have to hide. You <laughs> see your friend. So your friend is going to eat some of the food or even more. <laughs> even more. Yeah. Yeah, but these guys, they don't mind. They are very good yeah, at sharing. So, hi, uh, this is your boy Johnson. Welcome to yet another episode of uh, Afro Indian Connect TV. And today I'll be with our beautiful lady from Ghana. She will be Sister Delight, Delight Akusika. I think I know her name, her real names and everything. Yeah, I know everything name. about her. What's my yeah. name? I forget her name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we give her to introduce herself. Huh? So hi, I'm happy to be part of African Connect. And my name is Delight Akusika Ayubo. I'm a Ghanaian. I didn't forget your name. I just wanted you to say it. <laughs> I will. It's very easy. I know it. I'm a Ghanaian. The egg people and the please, please people. Ah. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Sister Delight, can you give us a brief like um, background of your life when you used to be in Ghana before you can come here to India? Okay. Brief about myself is very quiet, reserved, not too friendly, and very religious. And um, yeah, she's such a simple lady. <laughs> Nothing so sophisticated or not in big life, yeah. All right, all right. So, uh, upon your arrival in India, what were the key, like, uh, key differences you could spot from your country and then to India and your expectations like you have the expectations coming here what were your expectations and then how did you find them to, were your expectations met or not when you came here well personally for me hearing of India all I had known about India was good quality education very religious people very nice people and then coming here, I would say that my expectations was not totally met. But I would also not say that it was too bad. I think for me, when it comes to education, I cannot actually generalize in India because it's a, it's a very whole country that population, population is one almost that, more than one. that of Africa. Uh, yeah, the whole of so, Africa in one country. Yes. I cannot really do a comparison here. 
but from the education I received from where I came from comparable to what I received here it was below it was not adding up to what I expected actually they didn't meet your expectation in terms no. of the high quality education no. in your department yeah, yeah that, that is to say okay. all right yeah. all right so uh if you're looking at the life in india life uh like um, personal life social life and everything how do you find it for social life personally i'm a boring person <laughs> Sometimes quite reserved can, can, can and I, all that, but is it? Can I attest to that? That you're a boring person. I know myself. <laughs> it's it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. Okay, then you can prove to our viewers. Yeah. All right. So coming to India, since you said you're the religious person, reserved and all that, some things I forgot, of course. Uh, so <laughs> what can you say about the Indian religion? like their religion and how were you able to adopt in the religion part of India? Personally for me, I respect everyone's religion. And for me, I, I felt it was a privilege to actually get to know about our Bible church we have here in Anand. Because sometimes that's where I go to actually fill in the gaps. Yeah. Between home and here. Can you elaborate a little bit about the gaps, the differences here between here and home? Like, can you get to talk about them lengthy at the, at the greater length, a little bit? Okay. So, life back at home, definitely home is home. When it comes to climate, it's never too cold, never too hot. Here, it's always too cold or always too hot. When it comes to food, at home, it's something you are used to. You have this kind of favorite. You just miss Banku. Delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. and nobody has to look at you with a third eye for eating something that they don't really accept in their society. And sometimes, you know, nobody would be like, mm, they are eating chicken or they are. Mm. You just have that freedom to eat anything at any time. You don't have to be careful, but here you have to be careful what you eat around, whom around you eat things with, and all that. And also, let's say life, I am social life. For me, I have very few friends, as I said. So, am I one of the friends? I mean back at home. Oh. So <laughs> it's just maybe It was the same question I was going to ask. Going to the mall mm. and going for swimming, this little going out to the restaurant or something, just this mm. and then hanging out as friends and chit chat and all that. And then but back here I think sometimes you we get to, then home you you need to actually gather some money to actually go out. Mm -hmm. But here money is available, so outing was not a problem. But sometimes I think we are all careful when it comes to having a garden. Nobody wants to get too close before they they say. Mm. So sometimes <laughs> everybody is so careful. You yeah. know? Careful and, just spending. Yeah. Spend, yeah? then, like you understand what I mean. I mean ah, come here. <laughs> ah. We're talking about uh, this spending, like uh, we don't just spend and everything when it goes to party. We have a problem because if they see you with me today, and then <laughs> the whole, I think the whole India, <laughs> because yeah, because I, I'm I'm t I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You see, now we are sitting here having a good chat. Somebody from my country, my country may, who is not even in, in Gujarat, huh? who is not even connected to Afro <laughs> con India connectivity. And then they will be asking me about something that happened here in Thailand. Yeah. So that's how the news move here. How? Because I only thought only Indians do that. How does it move with Africans? I can also not explain. Because <laughs> I also don't know how, but... Mm. All right. So uh, already we have talked about the education system, we have talked about the religion, and then, okay, can you tell us, like, uh, that particular thing 
that you like most about India? Like, uh, you know, it can't always be uh, pepper. Sometimes you'll have some sugar, some cane mm -hmm. and everything. Mangoes. We have mangoes now. It's time for mangoes now in yeah. India. What is it that you like most about India? Like, ah, India is a go-to country. In terms of this, India is a go-to country. Yeah. yeah. Personally, for me, the Indians here are quite friendly. Not racist. They are quite nice. And... Sometimes we all go through hard times, but you you would go out there and you see an Indian smiling at you yeah. just because they are happy to see an African. And sometimes, even without thinking unconsciously, it also puts a smile on your face. And it's something so nice about them that I actually respect so much because back at home, mm -hmm. nobody sees a very nice smile. And smile yeah. <laughs> you are even a target, like. We are you keeping see, an eye on you in case you want to come and steal from us, like the British, like yeah. that kind of thing, you know. So it's quite an, an in, and they share food a lot. Oh my God! Every time you have an Indian oh friend, they invite you for dinner, they invite you for lunch, they something. Always, they are always nice with their food. Mm. They never say no, don't eat with us. Mm. Or they always want to share. Ah. That's something beautiful about Indians. Because they love each other. So yeah. at home, when you have food, you have to hide. You <laughs> see your friend, because your friend is going to eat some of the food or even more. <laughs> even more. Yeah. Yeah, but these guys, they don't mind. They are very good yeah. at sharing. Yeah. So in short, what we are trying yeah. to say, there is minimal racism or close to zero racism. Yeah. If you say they are that, like, you know, yeah, interactive they and they are like that sharing, that means there is no racism. Close to For minimum me, racism. I can yeah. say that, yeah, very minimum racism. And they don't really do it to your face. At least that is fine. Mm -hmm. They are not able to express it to your face. So, uh, throughout your stay here in India, I heard that you have, you have like two years here in India and you have just completed your master's degree. Ah, congratulations, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. So throughout your stay here in India, what was the most difficult time you faced? Oh my God. Yeah. <sighs> For me, the Don't cry. Most thing. <laughs> she, she, oh, yeah, we have that. So emotional. Yeah. The most difficult thing for me was my academics because I actually came here with a mindset that, okay, I have bachelor's in economics and I'm now coming to master the economics. Mm. I need to go back for people to know that, yeah, this is there's a difference. This is a master's student. Mm. Something like when I open my mouth to speak, yeah. you know, they should know that, yes, yeah, this girl, economics has passed through my veins. Yeah. And then I came here and it was like a whole different story. For me, it all started when I actually did not get MS Economics, but MA. Oh, you wanted economics. MS? I, I chose MS from the website, but when it came, it was MA. And I had to do Master of Arts, mm. which was quite too theoretical for my for my brain to actually mm, grab all these theories and some concepts in mm. economics that Jesus Christ. But they still managed at least to get to you like uh, from the level you are at bachelor's now at least uh, if you are at 50% yeah. at bachelor's now you are at 80-90%. Yeah. You just need to fill the gaps yeah. when you get home and then yeah, you are good master's I actually struggle student. with lectures because of the language barrier. Yeah. And sometimes I had to go to class and still go and use my lectures for extra mm. lesson in English. Mm. And it was a whole lot for me because at the end of the day, I mostly had to study by myself most mm. of the time. Mm. And then go to my lectures for clarifications or something. It was a lot for me. For you, you told me like uh, your classes were designed in Gujarati language yes. no, and not English. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know how did they like accept somebody who they know is from is an international student and then come i can imagine it was worse yeah. for you right all right i was saying last but not least uh when you came you came in as a christian right and uh, for me i would like to say it was my first time of encountering hindus and then i don't know for you 
your experience how did they perceive you as a christian was it easy to find the church and everything like your spiritual life how was it the transformation from africa to here how was it okay so for me this being my first time also leaving my country i thought if i come would i find a church and all that but i googled actually before coming here realized there was a church around unfortunately when i came Mm -hmm. I met one African who actually brought me to the church. Mm -hmm. So that was how I was able to. But talking about my spiritual life, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it has been consistent as it was back at home. Mm -hmm. Because there had been this ups and down, and you know, I have not been really consistent and hasn't been as it is. Mm -hmm. But personally, for my personal relationship with God, I have always tried to keep myself at it by doing the the possible, listening to the gospel most of the time, praying most of the time, always having my quiet time. I try to do that even if I'm not able to. Even if you're not coming to, the to church. church and all that, I kept that at it because at the end of the day. Personally, for me, that is where I find my strength. Mm. So tell me, like, uh, the community, how do they perceive you as a Christian? Because uh, I understand India is like uh, over 50% uh, Hindu. So how do they perceive you as a person? You're not a Christian and you're not a Muslim. How do they perceive you? How do they accept you in the community? So I think Indians accept people's religion as they are. But the only thing they do not accept is for you to try to introduce their religion, your religion to them, mm. especially Christianity or Islamic to Hindu or something. So I respect that I stay in my lane, they also stay in their lane. Mm. And that's it, we are all cool. We are cool, all right. Yeah. So what, would be, what would be the advice that you give to somebody who is planning to come to India, whether for education purposes, or for work, or just to come and then visit India, look around. So how would you advise that somebody that uh, this is this about India, or your perspective about India that you could give to somebody else? So personally for me, if I should advise someone coming to India, I would say that India is a very big country. And there are so many schools in India, a lot. And the more the quantity, you should know that the more the the residuals so and like, yeah. Mm. So you have to be really careful in choosing your school. Yeah. That is the most important thing because you'll be shocked. The India we hear that education is good. It, it doesn't mean that every school in India here provides very good quality education, even uh, teaching to the material to uh, like activities in school you know mm. man management yes management so you really have to choose your school very carefully and also it's not all about the top schools has been in existence or is known no mm. you actually it is best even if you know someone in india who can actually recommend schools to you because this place is really huge Mm. And it's difficult. In India, about their food, about uh, their transport. Uh, they have good transport here in Gujarat, at least. Yeah. I, I know this one. Yeah. So, about that, how would you advise somebody who is coming to India? Like, uh, I mean, you know, from my country, let me say, it's very cold. Like, maybe the temperature now, it's winter, or maybe minus two. You know? And maybe in Ghana now, it's good. 30, 30. How do you advise somebody on the climate? Because you have been here, I think, for the whole four seasons, if they have the yeah. four seasons. We have been here. How do you advise somebody who is coming? At what season do you recommend? Like, come at this season. This season is very hot. This season is very cold. Where? So, as I said earlier, India is very huge. There are certain parts of India that are so cold. There are parts that experience no. Mm. And there are parts that experience sun, mm. <laughs> like us. Like. So, I'm coming to India. For me personally, I'll tell you that India is full of a lot of surprises. I cannot tell you all, but depending on where you are, when you come to Gujarat, 
expect expect expect, <laughs> expect the weather to be too cold during the December to January thereabouts. Mm. And it's not so long. Yeah, the, the Z winter Z is not December, so long. January. Yeah, but the summer is so long, and it, it's so hot. Like, and there's the thing they call monsoon. Eh? Yes. And this thing extends and the from the raining season ah. and all that, and it gets flooded a lot here in Gujarat. And mm. you know, we have that uh, India is like abroad, but our ex, our, I advise <laughs> you to lower your expectations because. I don't see so much difference between India and Africa, personally. Uh, for me, I think you. Yeah. Okay, it's not about me now. Hey. <laughs> it's just about you. Okay. It's about her person. Yeah, it's about her. All right. For me, I think. Anyway, I thank you so much for coming tonight for for hosting, mm. uh, for agreeing to come to Africa Indian Connect TV, and then hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.